is our strength. Our strength. We are a strong people because we have, because we're a glad people. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, lift your hands up before the Lord right now. This is a prophetic act. This is an act of obedience on your part. And I, what I saw was that we have both hands up before the Lord. Both hands. Both hands up. And the Lord is anointing your hands right now. I saw him doing this. He's, there's oil coming on your hands right now. Oil. That is, it's, it's an oil to bless the work of your hands. That the hands... Your hands match the hands of the anointed one. The anointed one puts the anointing on your hands so that you're doing what his hands are doing. So Lord, we present these hands before you to be anointed with power from the anointed one to do the work of the anointed one. We receive it right now. We receive it right now. We declare that, Lord, that there's, gonna, that there's a change right now in our work. There's a change. There's a change. There's an ease to the work of our hands that wasn't there before. There's a grace that's on the work of our hands. And, Lord, some of our hands are being removed from old tasks to be put onto new ones. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we say that these hands are your hands, Lord. These are your hands to do your works. And you receive all the glory for it. In the name of the anointed one. In the name of the anointed one. <laughs> There's no lack of anointing. Overflow. Overflow. Woo. This empowerment from heaven right here. Empowerment. <laughs> the Lord. Mm. There's new skills that are being put on your hands right now. There's skills for instruments, musical instruments. There's skills to do a ministry that you've not done before, like deliverance or something like that. The Lord is imparting skills into you that are supernatural. They're supernatural. You won't have to learn it. It's imparted right in by Holy Spirit. And he'll expand it as you use it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we, just as the psalmist cried out to you, the, he said, bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of our hands. So we say the same. Bless the work of our hands. Just say it before the Lord right now. Bless the work of our hands. Because these hands are your hands. These are instruments of righteousness. These are instruments of righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I believe as a confirmation of this that some of us are going to see oil on our hands right now. If you look at your hands, you might see some oil or you might see some glitter, what looks like glitter, some sparkle on your hands. 
Just take a look at your hands. See if you see anything on your hands. Hold it in the light. See if you see. Last Sunday, we were experiencing the smell of anointing oil on our hands. So maybe you could smell it on your hands. I don't know. Anybody seeing anything on your hands right now? Any hands? Glitter, oil, smells, anything? You smell? You see some glitter? Yeah. This is, like I said, this is a sign. It's a sign that the Lord has done what we've asked. Okay? We may not all be seeing it, but it's a sign to all of us that this is done. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Oh, you all have it right here? Yeah. 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 So when Pastor was saying uh, that God was, there was going to be an ease coming, I heard the Lord say there's going to be a smooth transition. He's going to give us lots of help, and his people will volunteer in the day of powers. That scripture that goes with that word. And then he said he's giving us open ground in which to maneuver. So, Lord, we just thank you for a smooth transition, lots of help, and open ground in which to maneuver today and all the days of our life. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for the anointing, Lord. Thank you for it. We already have it. Thank you. We seal this by the power of the blood against which nothing can stand and nothing can speak. It's sealed. It's finished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear and a mind to understand as we step forward in this new anointing that to, to discern where we have stepped into new anointing, to discern it so we can steward it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo. Hey. I think we I think it's appropriate to give the Lord a, a clap offering, applause, a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God has been God has been faithful, as faithful as faithful. I can't get off the word faithful. Woo I'm stuck on faithful. <laughs> An awesome God we serve. I want to thank every single person that has attended this school. And right now, before I preach, because once I preach, then when I get through, I want to move in the gifts. So I want to do all the certificates now. And so when we call out your name, um, we want you to come up. And she's going to call them off pretty, pretty fast. So then she's going to set them on the chair. So if you don't get up there fast enough, then you're going to have to find it on the chair. You follow? So as soon as you get the certificate with your name, you're going to come up here and stand. You're not going back to your seats, OK? So. You have to come up here. Come on. You have to, everyone, when I call your name, you have to come up here. Janice? All right. Just call them fast. We'll, we'll clap after everybody's up here. She's coming. Name, name the next one. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> I signed them. Uh, Patricia? Uh, 
Okay, you can get on this side because we're going to need more. Okay, everybody move over on this side. Just kind of, okay. We need, yeah. Okay, thank you. They've been to all the sessions. They might have missed one, maybe two at the most. So I want some of you to get up on the stage behind me. Come on. We're going to take a picture. Okay. Can you move this back further? Yeah. Okay. Okay, some of you get up on the stage. Can you get on the stage? Oh, if you can if you can't get on the stage. No, no, okay. Just those that you can get. If you can't get to stay down here. Come on. Come on down this way. And some of you get up on the stage. We're going to get a picture. If you can get up on the stage, get up on the stage. You get by me. Okay. Pastor, I want you up here too. P please. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling you. I'm just. Okay. Some of you get up on the stage. I think altogether there was 39 or 40. Okay, come on. Let's get some. We're getting a picture. So some of you are going to have to get up on the stage behind if you can. Some of you can get maybe down here in front, uh, maybe on your knees. Us older people are not going to do that because we cannot get up. Now, did we forget anybody? Okay, scoot over this way. Pastor actually didn't get one, but that's okay. We'll give him one. Oh, we did. Okay. Oh. All right. So, Julie, tell us how to scoot. Everybody put your certificate put scoot 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 together. Let's 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 be family. Okay. Hold your certificates in front of you. Jesus. Do a couple. Did that come out good? Did it come out good? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. God bless you all. You're good students, really. Could you uh, grab that thing over there and bring it? No, no, the, the yeah, with all my stuff. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to let you know, Pastor and your lovely wife, thank you, thank you, thank you for hosting this. Let's give them a big hand. You see, your pastor is bringing people in he he knows who he's bringing in for when he brings them in and and just times them out every way so that he knows his he's teaching you but he knows that you in order to grow a church you need the fivefold you you can't a pastor can't do it all and you and you it's like every now and then you get a little treat and, and the preacher might say exactly what the pastor's been saying forever I don't know how many pastors have told me this 
I have said the same thing and preached the same messages that you've preached, but for some reason, oh, Joan, it's so good. And, uh, and he said, I've been preaching it for five years, but because it's a different person. So it's just to bring people in uh, to be a blessing. And it costs to bring people in, and it's extra work, and the praise team had to be out every night, and a lot of catchers, probably a little, then they get catch, and then they have to be prayed for for their back. And <laughs> anyway... But I have a different message tonight. So I'm going to pray first. Father, we just come before you. I thank you, almighty God. I thank you for all these wonderful people that are here and those that have been watching the live stream and on Facebook and all of them that maybe have come different nights. We're so honored that you showed up. Nothing could be done without you, Jesus. You are everything. And you've made this happen. You have opened people's hearts, opened people's ears, and they're, they're like little baby birds just getting all they can grab. They're hungry, hungry, hungry. And I thank you. Jesus, I thank you that you're here in the midst of us to do miracles tonight. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through Joan, and, and whatever you want me to do, you will do. I thank you, angels, that you are to work with the heirs of salvation, which I am. So, angels, I'm expecting you to do what you're supposed to do that I can't do. And all glory and all honor go to the Father in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to talk to you about, we've been, the whole school has been the school of the supernatural. And to me, there's nothing, nothing, nothing more important than this one supernatural thing. When somebody says, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And you ask Jesus into your heart with all your heart, and you meet it. And immediately you're transformed from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Jesus. And that is the most miraculous miracle ever. And that miracle took place on the cross of Calvary when Jesus died and he came to earth for that purpose. He came to re restore what Adam and Eve lost. He came to make sure that you can be joint heirs with Christ. He came so that you can walk in power, glory, and that you can eventually be in a heavenly home. So to have a school of the supernatural and not share with people how to lead people to Jesus, to me, would be a shame. So tonight's going to be evangelistic. And so you all got a card like this, or you should have. Okay, I'm going to be teaching from it. I think it looks like you had some like it. But before I do, I want to bless a few people. So I'm going to bless a few people, and then as I preach, I'm going to bless more people. Just going to let you know how I'm going to bless people. Because when I get through, all these books that are on here are going to be out there with you. So I'm going to bless somebody now. This here, and we're talking about angels. We're living in a season where angels are going to start showing up. I'm telling you, you're going to start seeing angels. I mean, literally, you open your eyes, and you're going to see angels working with you. Okay, now some people try to tell me that's Old Testament. And I go, no, it's not. Cornelius had an angel came to him and said, go send for Peter. Now, I just want you to know, angels cannot preach the gospel while we're here. Now, I want to say something very important to you. We, believe me when I say this, all the angels in heaven rejoice whenever somebody accepts Jesus. They would love... The angels would love to be able to do what you're doing. Amen. They would love to be sharing Jesus. They would. But this, this, so this is gonna, this is gonna blow you out of the water. Years and years ago, my mind went blank. Da -da 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 -da. <coughs> Hold on. <laughs> Somebody's got to help me, and you're all saying, we have no idea what you're doing, so how are we going to help you? Okay. Oh, 
he was a boring preacher. Okay, that, don't tape that. I mean, that's okay. He was a boring preacher, but every miracle, and he had angels that followed him all the time. Come on, help me. Huh? No. Who? Yeah, that's it. William Branham. William Branham was, they said that he would preach, and people would get so bored in his tent meetings and his crusades, totally bored, and fall asleep. But all of a sudden, he'd go, they're here. They're here. You see, he had an encounter with angels, and the angels said, when you go to minister, we'll show up. And as soon as the, the angel, he'd say, we're here, the whole auditorium would get electrified. And then whoever he called up for prayer was healed even before they even got up there. Now, we had something happen in a tent meeting of ours that we did upstate New York. Upstate New York, I had a lady sing, and she was supposed to come here and sing for you, but another time. But anyway, um, she sang a song, and she put a tape recorder in the tape thing to sing the song. We were exhausted. I'm telling you, the whole team was exhausted. I had uh, 59 people with me for two weeks doing evangelism work. And I decided that they were going to get, now this is what I decided, and what I think God told me to do it. And I'm sure he did, because it turned out just fine. And I, I, just, I mean, the Holy Spirit told me how to organize it. So I had everybody, everywhere we went, we went on buses, trains, and subways. Now, it's really hard not to lose somebody when you have 57 people and you're coordinated. The only one on the whole trip that got lost was me <laughs> and my team, because we all had teams. My team got off at the wrong exit in the Bronx at 1 o'clock in the morning, and we're wandering around the streets trying to figure out where the church is, and the policeman pulled by and said, are you guys out of your mind? I said, well, uh, there was five in my team. And we said, we, we're trying to find such a... They said, you got off the wrong exit. So I'm going to drive the car real slow and walk you guys to the right train and get you to the right place. And he told the driver, when you get them over to Boston Road, make sure you take them and drop them off at the front door of the church, which they don't usually do. But William Branham, and so the lady that sang for us at that tent meeting that we got lost at, I, all of a sudden she got through singing, and we all applauded. All of a sudden, we all sat down. All of a sudden, we're hearing legions of angels applauding. Angels filled the entire tent and, and clapped and clapped and clapped and clapped. I got it on tape. But then she turned the camera off, or maybe she fell out under the power. I don't remember. But anyway, we've got three minutes of angels clapping and clapping. And I couldn't figure out why until later. We had led at that point in two weeks uh, something like 89 people to Jesus. And the angels were applauding us as a missionary team for doing this work. So back to the tape series. William Branham. Before the Crusades, they decided to play a prank on William Branham. They're setting up the Crusades. So they're almost through, and they have to check the sound system. And so the guys, uh, two of the guys were sitting down, and the other sound guy was at the tape. And they started singing because they're tired. They want to build themselves up. Hallelujah. So they're singing hallelujah, off key, and the whole bed. And the guy started taping it into the house. And to their surprise, they captured the legions of angels. It's on this tape. Now, it's a little muffy because it's been typed over, taped over, taped over, taped over. But you'll hear one of the angels sing a soul. Patrick. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You can, okay. you can okay. preach. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Don't go too far. Okay. 
Okay. Do you want a chair? No. Okay. I, I told somebody once, if you make me not use my hands and I sit down, nothing comes out my mouth. But anyway, so the solo angels on this, you hear them singing hallelujah. It'll put hair. And my, my teaching tonight is evangelism, okay? So I have this atheist fr friend, well, he's a friend of somebody. He comes to my house, and he, I try witnessing to him. He was actually working on something in the house. And uh, he was a stranger, sort of, but somebody recommended, you know, how you get people to come do things in your house. He said, I, I started trying to witness to him. He said, I don't believe in God. And I just said, oh, that's okay. I said, I want you to hear something. I put this in my uh, player. He sat there, and the, uh, the singing of the angels, he started weeping and weeping and weeping and crying. And, and what is that? What is that? What is that? I said, it's the anointing of God, and those are angels singing. He said, I believe in God. He said, I'll accept Jesus now. <laughs> anyway, back to this. So the solo sings, alleluia, listen to me, alleluia ringing all across the land. Everyone is singing at the Lord's command. All the saints and angels up in heaven wait to hear the news of Jesus and his children as they're coming through. It's yours. There's more on the book table. So anyway, soul winning. Go ahead. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. So soul winning is very, very important. So another one I'm going to throw away right now and give to somebody and they're out on the table too, is God spoke to me. This is a vision of heaven when God took me to heaven. You see, when I first got started in ministry, this is very important for all of you, I wanted to be a hot shot. I'm just being honest. I thought someday I'm going to be a great Catherine Coleman and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be this and I'm going to lead thousands of people to the Lord and my ministry is going to bounce off the wall and be recognized all around the world. Well... <laughs> It might still, but so anyway, I'm uh, in the Philippines. No, I wasn't. I was in Mexico on a mission trip, and there was uh, swastik signs on everything. And three of our missionaries they found uh, several weeks before we got there, cut up in an agoli, dead. So when we got there, they said uh, you have to stay close because when you see these swastiks are killing people especially christians so don't go wandering off too far well i kind of decided to go for a walk so i didn't go too far because they said don't go too far but i guess i went too far so i went a little ways and all of a sudden i hear this roaring of engines lots of engines lots of engines and i could see a whole caravan of jeeps and jeepneys and some kind of military type Behave yourself. <laughs> Military type things, and they all had the swastik signs on it. And I went, I'm not ready to die. So even though I'm afraid of skates, uh, snakes, I jumped in the bushes, crawled way into the bushes so they, nobody could see me. And while I was in the bushes, the, the Lord gave me an open vision. He showed me me with a soul winner's crown on my head. It was gorgeous. It was the most beautiful colors I've ever seen in my life, ever. All the colors in the stone were radiant, 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 um, like even colors that we don't have here on earth. And, and the gold was like, makes our gold look dull. Our, it, the gold is just so radiant. If you ever have a vision to heaven, the colors are different. And there's live music there all the time. It's like everything sings, the tree sings, the rock sings, all of everything sings. All of a sudden in the vision, the crown rolled off my head, and it went in a mud puddle. And there it is, a golden crown filled with stones like that on the mud. But it didn't sink yet. So I'm sitting there, and I'm watching every stone go pop, 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 pop. And the stones were going in the mud until the crown was empty, and then it sunk. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I started bawling and bawling. Because I knew what that, I knew what that vision meant. And I said, God, God, what is this? He said, you have lost everything you have done up to this point. Every soul, every person, you have no credit for it. 
and I, uh, by that time I'd been crusades, huge crusades. Your attitude is not right before me, Joan. Your attitude is that you want to see people to recognize you. You feel like you have to toot your horn and be recognized anyway. Uh, and he was right. He said, you do have a pure heart, though, and you really want people saved, but it's not completely pure heart. So I have to do this. I wept in those bushes for I don't know how long. And I repented. He said, God changed my heart. Give me a heart for the lost. You see, if you have everything and you can heal people and do everything, that's only to bring them to the point where they will come to Jesus. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? So I said, change my heart, God, and make my heart be filled with love and compassion. The next thing, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven, and I feel like a little girl with a, one, a real fluffy dress, and I feel like I'm a five-year-old. But I'm not a five-year-old. I'm grown up, but I'm all, all like giddy and excited and the electricity of heaven. You think praise and worship is awesome. You just, the believe me, heaven is like electricity going through your whole body and you're like energized, like an energized bun bunny or whatever. But anyway, it's, it's awesome. So I feel like, oh, and the presence and the music I could hear and I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. All of a sudden, I hear this, this angel over here blows a horn, and I turn, and he has a crown, a beautiful crown, and he comes walking over to me, <laughs> he, he comes walking over to me, and he places this crown He places this crown. I have to stand up to do this. He places this crown on my head. And let me move this just for a second. He places this crown on my head. And then this angel over here that's about 18 feet has a long horn. And he, he blows the horn. And it vibrates like it's going through me in me, around me, everywhere. And then in front of me, a curtain opened. <laughs> a, a curtain opened. And the, this angel says, you can go in now. And so as I started walking in, here's the opening right here. As soon as I walked one foot into the opening, I couldn't see it, but there was Jesus. I fell on my face. I laid on my belly, and I took my crown, and I threw it at his feet, saying, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. And I came out of the vision. There's nothing more important than a soul. You're all here because I'm OK now. OK. I, I, <laughs> You're all here. You're all here because somebody took time to pray for you, to fast for you, to witness to you. And not just one, because some of us are real stubborn. It takes 50 or 25 or a lot of people to witness to people. So I'm going to bless somebody with this. I'm going to bless you with one too, Pastor. But somebody else is getting this one because I don't want you to be, you know. You can get one off the book table. Okay, ready? Somebody? Whoops. I, 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 oh, yeah, I shouldn't throw stuff. Okay, next thing. How do you witness to people? How do you witness to people? I'm going to read a scripture. It says in Matthew, and these two pages, what I have, is supposed to be in that book, but somehow the printer didn't get them in the book. But that's okay because they're on the card. Okay. What was going to be the last two pages of your syllabus was supposed to be in the book. So when I make another order, I'll have them in the book. So it has steps on how to lead people to the Lord and steps on how to lead people to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, but you need to hear the heartbeat of God. Matthew, 
Matthew 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the villages, cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors, so I want to say to, something to you. You know, not only are you going to pray the Lord of Harvest for harvesters to come, because we're in the end times, and we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls. And it's going to be great miracles and signs and wonders, but we're going to have the greatest harvest the world has ever seen worldwide. And I know that prophetically. Okay, I do know that. The Lord showed me visions of the wheat fields that are coming in and coming in and coming in and coming in. Yeah. So God wants us to pray the Lord of harvest, and he wants us to have eyes to see. That's why I've been here with the School of Supernature. You need to learn how to see in the spirit realm because you'll walk up to people and you'll be able to read their mail and say, are you going through this, this, and this? And they go, how do you know that? And they start crying right in the store or wherever on the beach or wherever you're, because you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit to people that are hurting and lost and sick. And, and you might walk up and say, do you have cancer? And they go, how do you know that? I'll give you a story. One time we were in a church in, in um, Carolina somewhere, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, one of them. And uh, we prayed and prayed about where to go. I want to share with you how God will work things out. And then you'll walk in your own book of Acts. We all prayed, and I sent everybody out, the whole team, out. I had, like, maybe 30 people going out. Send them all out two by two, like God said. They all went different directions. I'm just going to share two quick stories. The house we went to, the Lord gave me a vision of a house number and a street. Now, can God do that? Of course he can. Cornelius was told where to go, what street, and everything. Um... Ananias was told, go to Saul at such and such street. Okay, so God will tell you where, but you have to start praying in tongues more, and you need to get pressing into God more, because this next wave of God is going to be where you're going to go to a whole new level that you've never been before. Yeah. And you've got to learn to yield to it and give up your life and let his life flow through you. So I see the house number and the street, and so we, we didn't have GPS then, so we, we found it, and nobody's home. So I know this is our assignment. We prayed and prayed and prayed for almost two hours, and we were supposed to meet back in the church, and being so I'm the one that was heading it up, I had to get back first. And I'm like, wow, it's getting late, I need to really go. Just as we're starting to pull out, the car pulls in their driveway, they had groceries, and, and I said, let, no, don't, let's not get up right now and attack them. You know, let's let them have a few minutes to get some. So we waited till they got the groceries in the house. And I think we helped them bring in a few. When I got in the house, I said to the lady, did you just come from the doctors and find out you have cancer? She started bawling. My wife is full of cancer. We went to the doctors and... Then we went to the store. I said, your wife is not going to die. God sent us here and even gave us your address. She is going to be healed. And she was. Another one went to a door, sh shared the love of Jesus. She said, go away. I don't want to hear about Jesus. I'm Catholic. I have my own religion. And she started to slam the door on me, so I put my foot in the door. And she hit it. I mean, she hit my foot. And I said, wait a minute. I said, you have a husband that is dying in your house right now. And, uh, and the Lord gave me a vision. I said, you come in your house. You go through your living room. There's a hallway that goes to the left. I said, at that end, there's a bathroom at the end. And then if you turn right, the far bedroom, your husband's right there in a hospital bed that you have set up in that room. Would you like to let me in? Come in. This is what, where we're going. This is what God wants. This is what God wants of us. He wants us to move in a realm of the supernatural that people will get saved, 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 and saved. And so 
God wants to use us. And so back to pray the Lord of harvest. So this is what I do, and I would recommend you doing it. Lord, you said send laborers into your harvest field. Let me be a laborer for you, God. Send me. Instead of always wanting somebody else to do it. Somebody else to do it. Somebody else will do it. When God finds out that you'll be obedient when he talks to you, he'll start using you more and more and more and more because he knows that you'll hear his voice and you'll obey. But if you start hearing that small voice from the Holy Spirit and you're too busy to stop and do what he tells you to, pretty soon he won't bother you anymore because he knows you won't obey. So I have these tracks that I, uh, actually, this is Marty's. He said, I couldn't believe what my husband did the other day. We were in the store. We both carry tracks. Okay. I wrote this one. He wrote that one. Okay. So I started to hand the lady a track. He goes, oh, no, you don't want that one. Here, it's mine. I said, honey. <laughs> he said, no, you need both of them. She said, yeah, I need both of them because I want to share them because I'm already saved. <laughs> I have tracks on the book table. I don't think anybody in this building bought any of these. Did they? You did. Okay. Who else bought a set? You. Oh, good. That is good. That is good. Most times I have these on the book table, and they just overlook them. These tracks are conversation starters. You don't know. Hey, I'd like to give you something. Here's a little something. Just take time to read it when you have time. When I'm going through McDonald's uh, and I pay, I say, here's something when you get off work, read it. I just leave them when I pay my bills, you stick one in the bill, you stick one wherever. And you don't know, people start reading it. I see them read they read it. I love Marty's the best, actually. Somebody loves you. I love it. Somebody loves you and has all the scriptures on how to be saved and the prayer and everything. And mine's now, now's the time. And then the first scripture, it says, we're living in perilous times. It's time for Jesus, so that, they're both good. Okay, so. Okay, you better protect your faces. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, I, they, I was always the last person picked on all games. So then the Holy Spirit, oh, I have one more. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Oh, back. Whoever can catch it. Oh, oh she did catch it. Then I, then I, so when you're, when, you know what, I'm just going to say this. I heard prophetic words this morning that we're in an army, right? Did you hear prophetic words that we're in the army? All right. And that you're going to learn how to use your tools? Okay. They don't send you out on the front lines with a gun that you have never even taken apart or cleaned. They don't just put you in a plane and say, here, here's the key, go. They don't do that. They make you go to a thing called boot training, and they do it on purpose, make it really hard. Because I always said to somebody, why did they make you get up so early? Why don't they let you sleep till nine? Why do they make you have to carry such heavy backpacks? You know why? Because if you ever get out in war, and you have a buddy that's there, and they get shot. You can't take that person that's gonna, getting shot and try to put him on your shoulder and get him over so he's not in the aim of fire and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know what, I'm just so tired, I'm going to have to leave you here. No, you have to be ready. And just like in a re real military, you have to know your tools. So you better get your Bibles out. And uh, in my iPhone, uh, everybody has iPhones. That's something you all have. I have a section that I just click, and it's all the salvation scriptures right there. So I can just go to it and read them, the whole what's on this card. Put all these scriptures into your phone, and, just, and then the other side on how to lead people to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit. When people get saved, they get the Holy Spirit. Some people, as soon as they get saved, I lead them right into the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I believe the sooner you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the better it is. So usually when you see me do an altar call, then I lead them to Christ and immediately go into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I have them ask the Holy Spirit 
Because it says if you ask the Father, he will give you the Holy Spirit. He will not give you a snake or a serpent. And that's what it says in, in uh, Luke. He, so if, if he says he won't give you, if you fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So he's not going to give you the Holy Spirit unless you ask. But you don't know how God's going to work. He works in mysterious ways. And so we don't put God in a box. So I love to see when people get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit immediately. That doesn't always happen. The Holy Spirit sometimes happens months later. I got saved. I got saved. And then it was like a few months later that I got the Holy Spirit. And then everybody prayed for me to get the Holy Spirit because it was life in the Spirit seminar at a Catholic church. And I was still going to the Catholic church. And they taught us how to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And that night they told us all to be ready. And they said, if you have any uh, weird books at home, uh, Mormon, Jehovah Witness, stuff like that, before you come tonight, fast and make sure you're ready to get the Holy Spirit. Well, I had Mormon books and Jehovah Witness books. I had tons of them because, you know, I had all this stuff because the Mormons had witnessed to me for nine months and the Jehovah Witnesses. I mean, I was getting ready to get saved, but all these fruitcakes showed up. But anyway, because there's always lying signs and wonders before the Lord shows up. So you should have seen me. Satan. So, I mean... I, I knew I, the, the man in charge told me to burn all these books, so I, I put them in the fireplace. I put stacked up, you know, I must have had eight, nine, ten books. I put them in the fireplace and ruffled up the pages, and they wouldn't burn. And I was like, but I didn't know about demons yet, so they wouldn't burn. And I thought, well, I have to get these burnt before the kids get home from school, or they're going to wonder what in the world their mom's doing burning all books in the fireplace. So I went out in the garage, and there was gasoline. So I got a cup of gasoline, you know, that we use for the lawnmower, but it did the job. Believe me, it did. So I poured gasoline all over the books, and then I stood away because I know a little bit. And I went, and when the kids came home, Mom, it's 100 degrees today. Why do you have a fire? Nah, never mind. But they did burn. But when everybody got prayed for, they all started speaking in tongues but me. And I went, what well, God must not love me. <laughs> and three, four days later, I'm in the car singing a song, praise song, and start speaking in tongues. So what I'm saying is, it's not from the devil. It's God wants you to have the Holy Spirit. And some get it when they go in the water and they get baptized, they come up speaking in tongues. Now, one thing I do want you to, say, to hear, you cannot get the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you're not saved. You have to be saved first. So if you're trying to get somebody filled with the Holy Spirit and nothing happens, you might want to find out if they're saved. Second thing you might want to find out with my mother-in-law, I was leading my mother-in-law to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I know she's saved. And uh, when I tried to get her to pray, she couldn't or wouldn't or whatever. And then I said, I, I couldn't believe what my mother-in-law did, actually. Um, I still haven't seen anybody do what she did. And um, I, said, I said, Kitty, I said, um, do you have unforgiveness towards anybody? And she goes, do I have unforgiveness towards everybody? Starts listing a list, and she started getting mad and screaming and all this stuff. And I went, "That's why, that's why you haven't got the Holy Spirit." So I had her forgive everybody, and then I had her ask the the Holy Spirit to come, and had her repeat a prayer. And she just went off speaking in tongues like like somebody that had been a mature Christian for a hundred years. And then she did something very strange. She went and got her broom. And she opened her front door of her house, and she started going like this with her. Get out of my house, Satan! Get out of my house! And she was going like, get out of my house, Satan! And I was like, oh, I've never seen anything like this. So anyway, and she became a powerful intercessor for our ministry. So God wants us to lead people to the Christ, and he wants us to share Jesus. Now, so when you start witnessing to people, you can use the tracks as a conversation starter, but the best thing is one-on-one -on -one evangelism. I'm telling you, the best is one-on-one -on -one evangelism, that every one of you are called to be evangelists and are in the army of God. So everywhere you see people, that's what he said, you see the multitudes, you see them here, you see them there. So you, you pray every morning, Holy Spirit, you ask for the harvest, here am I, send me. Let me be sensitive, Holy Spirit. Let me be sensitive, Holy Spirit. 
when you want me to talk to anybody or go anywhere. And then don't be so busy that if he tells you to go somewhere, you don't know why he's telling you to go there. Just go there. If he tells you to go, I'll give you another story. One time I was preaching in Reno, Nevada, demonic place. Okay. And uh, I, had, I did the Sunday morning service, and then I had to do the Sunday night service. Now, I don't go shopping on Sundays. Just want you to know, I do never. I can't remember any time in my life that I shop on a Sunday when I'm preaching. Uh, because I usually go back and pray, 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 pray. So I'm there, and I keep hearing, go, go to Mervyn's. It's a clothing store in California. Go to Mervyn's. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to buy nothing. So I keep praying. It's go to Mervyn's. And I go, I have a service tonight. And I was like getting upset with this, go to Mervyn's. And I started rebuking the devil and all that stuff. And it, and, but, you know, it must have been not the devil. So anyway, it was like, go to Mervyn's. Go to church early and, and swing into Mervyn's. And so I, Lord, is that, Holy Spirit, is this you? Yes, go to Mervyn's. I said, okay. So I get in the store. And he doesn't show you everything. And that, if you want to learn, is in the book. Yes, you can hear God, all of this. And uh, so I go to Mervyn's. And the Lord says, get some clothes and go try them on. I said, well, there's nothing in this store that fits me. They're all real little sizes. He said, well, get something and go in the dressing room. So I grab a couple of things, and I go in the dressing room. So I get in, and they, uh, women only know this, okay. Then they give you a ticket, and you go in, and they give you a little door to go in and change clothes. So I'm in there with the clothes, but I'm not going to try them on because they don't fit anyway. Then I'm in there, and I'm going, okay, I'm here, Lord. I don't know what this is. And I hear the lady in the next room trying, trying, talking to her friend as she's trying on clothes. I'm so afraid I'm going to die. I'm so afraid I'm going to die. I, I, I'm, I'm petrified. And her friend says, well, what happened that all of a sudden you're petrified? She goes, well, there was this, uh, for $10 you could go to a fortune teller and they would tell you your future. And so I went to a fortune teller the other day. And ever since then I've been petrified. I can't sleep. I have nightmares and this and this and this. So I heard the whole conversation. And so I heard the door open, and she's coming out. Now, there's about 10 women back there, half an, all, and I said, ma'am, can I talk to you for a second? I want to tell you what happened. You opened the door to the devils and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I witnessed for about 15, 20 minutes. Pretty soon, all the ladies came out of the dressing rooms, and the lady sales ladies, and now I have this whole group. <laughs> no, no, this happens to me a lot. Okay, I have a whole group. I mean, I'll remember it happening in Hertz Castle. My mom came to find me, and she said, we lost you on the tour. Where did you go? So we went to the bathroom. And you got six ladies on the floor, kneeling down, praying and asking Jesus. I said, okay, Mom, I know. She said, can't you have a day without talking to people about Jesus? I said, no, not really. But anyway, I told her yes. I told her okay. The rest of the day, I, won't, I promise you I won't witness to nobody. Okay? Boy, that was not right because God, the Holy Spirit got me. So we're walking the wharf. This is another day. We're walking the wharf in Monterey. Don't talk to anybody because your mom and your daughter are ticked off at you. So I just took tracks and stuck them in the bathroom and, and you know, places so they would never knew I did it. <laughs> so I'm walking up to a man, and he's fishing, and I said, are you catching anything? And he turned and said, do you know how for me to go to heaven? Because I really want to know how to accept <laughs> Jesus. And I was like, I went. And uh, I was like looking at my mom, looking at my daughter, and I was like, it was like the Holy Spirit said, oh, so you're not going to talk about the Lord today, huh? So I led them to the Lord and prayed for them a while, and my mom and they were up there. So I finally get caught up with my mom and my daughter, and my daughter says, Mom, you, you know, this was before I married Marty. Mom, you not even don't know what's going on. He didn't really want to get saved. He was trying to pick up on you. I said, oh, no, he wasn't. I mean, men, men don't pick up on women by asking to be saved. Anyway, so we lead people to the Lord. We start conversations, and we're led by the Holy Spirit. These are all stories about how God led me. And actually, in Hertz Castle, was just I was putting tracks by all the sinks. 
And a lady said, what are you doing? I said, well, these tell people how to accept Jesus and, and how to get out of sorrow and if they're hurt and, and if they come to Jesus, they won't be sick anymore. And she said, I want to know more about it. Pretty soon other people were coming out of the bathrooms. You don't know how God's going to use you. You just don't know. And God wants to use us. Now, the worst thing in the body of Christ is this. After a person gets saved, <laughs> after people get saved, you need to get their name and number and pray for them. And you need to go with me to this next scripture. Matthew 28. In verse 16. And the eleven disciples, wait a minute, no, uh, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven, all, all, all authority, in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make decisions. Does it say decisions? Oh, you think it says decision? Oh, God, hallelujah. I got somebody to pray today and make a decision. That's really easy to make a decision. I told you tonight's going to be different. Okay, watch. Let's pretend I'm pregnant. I already have a big enough belly so I can pretend like it. Okay, pretend like I'm pregnant. See my big belly? And I come to church and you all say, Sister Joan, you're pregnant. We should have a shower for you at the church. I said, that'd be great. So I'm pregnant. And you say, what are you going to have? Because, you know, you can know now. Back then I couldn't. Okay, I'm going to have a little boy. Do you have the name picked out? Yes, I'm going to name him Alan. So that's my son's name. Anyway, so, uh, so then it comes time for me to have the baby. And, you know, I come to church. And one time I told the Lord in, in this story. I come to church and I'm skinny. And I said, Lord, I'd like to be skinny one day. That would be nice. And I even told the doctor, I think I have a problem, doctor. Because I went to the doctor to find out why I'm so chubby. He said, so he ran tests on me, right? When I came back, I said, okay, doctor, what's the results? He says, you do have a serious problem. And I said, I knew it. I knew there's a reason that I can't get skinny and lose weight. He says, you have an overactive fork. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, I'm going to get drunk tonight. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, so I'm pregnant, and I come to church, and I'm, I'm skinny, OK? And, and you all come up to me nicely. Oh, you had your baby. I said, I did. And he's a boy. Is he healthy? Yes, he is. Where is he? Oh, let's see. Where is he? Uh, let's see. I had him in the cart in the back uh, when I was at Walmart. <laughs> and then, let's see, I, then I went to Safeways to buy groceries. And I put him in the back of that little cart in, with his little car seat. And that's where he's at. He's at the grocery store. And you would all say, what kind of mother are you to leave your baby in the... And so you start attacking me, you beautiful saints of God. And I, and I say, don't get on my case. I know. I propped a baby bottle in its mouth. And I put a whole package of uh, formula in the back of the cart and a whole thing of Pampers. Sister Joan, you can't do that. But yet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm left-handed. It's okay. You can put it in my pocket. All right. Oh, perfect. So yet, you all think that's terrible. Right. 
Mothers won't do that. But yet, you come run into the pastor. Pastor, 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 I have had such a wonderful time, and I led somebody to the Lord. Great, where are they? Where are they? You know, we don't like people having abortions, but when you lead somebody to the Lord and you don't disciple them, you've just aborted a baby. And God is not happy that you abort babies. He doesn't like physical abortions, and he definitely doesn't like when you lead somebody to the Lord and leave them just flip-flopping around, not knowing what to do, because you know the parable of the sower and the seed. Immediately, Satan plucks up the seed and chokes out the word and the cares of this world, and they get saved, and they go home from something where you led them to the Lord, and they go home wherever you met them and talked to them, and they go, Honey, I asked Jesus into my heart, You talked with a total stranger today. Are you crazy? Well, I got there. They gave me the address of the church. I want to go to the church. Oh, no, you're not. There's so many weirdos out there. So you haven't discipled. You see, we can disciple people. And when I lead people to the Lord uh, and, and their husband or spouse isn't with them, I say, you know, when you get home, you're really excited that you got Jesus in your heart. But everybody in your family might not be as happy. That's just the devil's trying to get you back. So I kind of give them a buffer so that they know what to expect. You follow what I'm saying? And so after I lead people to the Lord, then I have these books, which are on the book table too. And I have a little yellow one, which I didn't bring any. But um, you should buy them by the cases, actually, because they explain the whole plan of salvation. So after I lead somebody to the Lord, I say, you know, I want to give you a gift. And so you keep, if you're in the army, you keep stuff in your car. You have Bibles in your car. We have Bibles in every car. We have tracks in every car. We have follow-up material. We even have extra Bibles. So if we need some of the Lord, we want to give them a Bible. We have flyers about the church or cards so they can call. So then I go, I want to give you this. Because just because they pray and say, dear Jesus, come into my heart, they don't understand what happened. They don't understand the warfare that's going to happen. They don't understand. So you need to put a tool in their hand. So I have this little tool that leads, tells them what happened, explains to them all about their salvation, and leads them right into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's see. Who am I going to throw this at? <laughs> oh, I, I tried to get it your way, but that's the way it went. <laughs> All right, sorry. Then I set up, I would love to come, and I say to the people, have you ever had trouble understanding the Bible? Now, we know that until they're saved, they have trouble understanding the Bible. So when I ask that question, pretty much they all say, yeah. I said, well, I would love to bring you and help you. Then I say, do you have a Bible? If they say no, then if I'm out and about, if I have one in the car, fine. If I don't, then I'll say, I'll be, can I have your address? I'll bring it by. Then I get their name and number, and then there's many ways to disciple. I can text them, call them, send cards. And usually when I take people out door-to-door -door evangelizing, we have a whole bunch of stationary cards. And before I let anybody go home, they all write a note. Thank you so much for taking time and letting me come into your home or talk to us. And write a scripture, a little note. I'll be calling you. If you need any problems, here's my number. And we put it in the mail the next day. I have, I have in this book, first book written ever. I didn't write it. Holy Spirit did. Has how to lead people to the Lord, how to do outreaches, how to, how to, lead, uh, how, how to disciple, how to set up home cell groups, how to grow a church from zero to huge. You go into a, if you go into a neighborhood and you lead one to the Lord, you go into their home, you start loving on them, you go, and you stay short. You don't stay long. And you compliment them on every thing you see in the house that you can compliment. Oh, are those pictures of your kids? Oh, I see those are trophies for golfing. Do you golf? Oh, yes, wonderful. And so you praise them, and you build a friendship. You have a little cup of tea with them if they want you to have a cup of tea. And this is what I use. I use these, which is a third book I wrote which I didn't write. I cannot take credit for any of these. So the Holy Spirit, because I went to my pastor, and I, first I went to my pastor when I w wrote this book and told him I was writing a book, and he said, Honey, we love you here at Word of Faith, but you know what? You don't even know how to read, so get this crazy idea out of your head. Well, I couldn't get it out of my head, so I don't know how, but that book, this book, and the other little yellow book were written before I ever knew how to read. 
I still can't figure it out, but this was, so this was the third, third book, because when I started taking people out witnessing, uh, they didn't know how to do a Bible study. The average person in a church has no idea how to put together a Bible study. So we teach the whole church these 12 lessons. The whole church. Okay? No, you're saying, well, it's not so much fun. It's like they're not falling out under the power of God and all that stuff. I go, no. But we need to learn how to use our tools, people. Yes. And then they all take the book apart and they put coals in it and they put it in a binder and then you have your own master manual and you add your own testimonies, your own stories and extra scriptures that you want to put in and you have your own workbook and then when that person needs to be discipled, you go over there and you have lesson two or lesson five or whatever lesson the Holy Spirit tells you to do. And it has these simple little half-hour lessons to disciple people on the basics. And then if you get one person here in this neighborhood saved and then you get one two blocks away or three blocks away because you went another time, then you finally say after you build a relationship with this one, you know, I'm doing the same thing with five, na five blocks away. Would it be all right if they, they came over when I do yours on Tuesday night? Now, Okay, I know this is probably not as exciting as you would like. You know, I don't really care. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I, I would rather be preaching, you know, have everybody laid out under the power of God. Okay, I'm being serious. You have no idea how serious I am. You have no idea how serious I am. We are not going to see the church grow if we don't learn basics and don't know how to disciple people. The Mormons know what they're doing. The Jehovah Witnesses know what they're doing. I know. They had me two days from being baptized Mormon. They were conniving. They would leave notes. They would bring over food. They would, a uh, women's thing is going on. No, something's going on at our church. I know you're raising three kids by yourself. Would you like me to take them off your hands for a day? Yeah, oh boy, hallelujah, take my kids. And I'd hide from them and they'd leave notes and they didn't give up. They didn't give up. My Bible, my Bible says, go into the highways and byways and compel them. My word, the word compel does not mean a one-time shot to try to get your family loved ones into the kingdom. Now don't harass them. You have to learn to a little bit back off, a little bit back off. Pray and fast. A little bit, back off. A little bit more, back off. It's all in this book. There's some out on the book table. Who wants to disciple somebody? I'm, that's his, his. The school. Everything that's in that book and some is in this one. Pastor, I'm going to give this to you in case you want to get a discipleship team going and have them watch those videos. So God wants you to know, take time, put the scriptures together. If you want to use a little pocket testimony, you can get one to keep in your car, highlight all the scriptures in red for salvation, yellow for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Take your tools I, I mean, it's just one hour here. Usually when I do the School of Evangelism, it's a full week. I can't even get it all in in four sessions like we did for the supernatural. So I just want to let you know. Musicians, come back up. The greatest miracle. The greatest, greatest miracle is you. Look what God has done for you. How many of you are so thankful that God, somebody witnessed to you, somebody prayed for you, somebody sought God for you, and the greatest miracle of all. cross yeah. greatest miracle is Jesus on the cross and when we don't tell other people about Jesus 
It's almost like we're slapping him in the face. He said, if I, it's not your church. When we go out there, we don't promote church. Although after we tell them where we go to church and how they can have fellowship. We're not going door to door. Hi, we'd like to tell you about our church. No, no, they don't care. You have to get them to Jesus first. Nothing, nothing is more important. And Jesus says, how can they hear? Romans 10, 14. How can they hear unless there's a preacher? How blessed are the feet of those that are sent. He doesn't say blessed is your hands for laying on the sick. He didn't even say blessed is your mouth for preaching the gospel. Why did he say blessed are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace and glad tidings? Because you've got to take your feet and go. School's great, but I wouldn't have done it justice if I didn't put in your heart. The importance of the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everything, everything. And when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he said, it is finished. Everything you need. He has given you all power, all authority, all wisdom, all knowledge, and he gave you the Holy Spirit and power. Every tool you need, nothing else. He did it all for you. Now it's your turn to show how much you love him. Not out of works like Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons, but out of love. That you love him so much that you don't want one living person. You see, it's God's heart that all be saved and not one fall short of the glory of God. That's God's heart. For God so loved the world. You know, I know you probably all think everybody knows that scripture. I was in my 30s. No, I was younger than that. I was 27, 28 before I ever heard that scripture. Don't take it for granted that everybody knows. One time witnessing, I was talking to a father trying to get a witness. And I, he's, I said, do you share Jesus with your children? Oh, yes. You don't need to go on and on, lady. Uh, we, we all, we're all saved here, and we know Jesus. About that time, his three kids ran in to get popsicles. I said, come here for a second. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Dad, are we supposed to know that man? Go ahead and play. Praise you, Jesus. I want everybody to raise your hands up. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, the harvest is plentiful. And the labors are few. Change my heart, God. Make my heart be just like you. Give me compassion for the lost, the hurting, the drug addicts, the prostitutes, the businessmen, the families, the children, the sick. Hear my Lord. Send me. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to pray. Anyone tonight, this is what Lord told me. If you are sick in body or you are being tormented by demons, if you have any addictions, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, precision drugs, or sick, come up now. That's who I'm going to pray for. Stand in the gap for them. Stand in the gap for my kids, too. Go ahead and sing a song. 
they're going to sing. So I want you all to let's do a little worship, and then I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to pray for your son. You're going to stand in the gap. I, I stayed away from your son today a little bit because I knew that he's, he, he's scared of me, to be honest. Everybody else, stretch your hands towards them. Stretch your hands towards them. Just say, God, set me free. I don't want to sin. I don't want my children to die without Jesus. I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. I want you to heal me and set me free. Fear must go. You did not give me a spirit of fear. I'm going to walk in love, power, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. And I will be able to witness. So send me out. Healed and delivered. In Jesus' name. Some catchers be ready. Scoot up, everybody, to me closer. That's fine. I'm not going to sit right there. Just go sit there. That's fine. Sit. I need you to, like, maybe move over and sit. Yeah, just move over a little bit. I'm going to be coming to you. Put your hands up. Put your eyes on Jesus. I, one of the ways that I stay focused on Jesus, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to see him on the cross. See what he's doing for you. He took this for you. He took this for your family. He took it for the world. He took the pain. He took the shame, the humility, the stripes on his back. So by his stripes you are healed. And by his love and compassion, he has brought you into the kingdom. For such a time as this, you are ready to be served. Go. In Jesus' name. Serve. Jesus. Jesus, let me pray for you. Shut up. Sit. Have her sit. I speak healing all through her body right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Keep looking at Jesus. Keep looking at Jesus. Fire. 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 Fire of God. Fire. Fire. Get them both. Get them both. Use it for your glory. Use it for your glory. Fire of God. Right here. Fire! Fire! Satan, I command you to come off of her in Jesus' name. Go through her body and burn everything in there that's not of you. Fire of God. Fire! Let me pray for your family. I pray for this church. 
that you will make it a soul winner, signs, wonders, yeah. miracle church, signs, wonders, yeah. and miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles, and they will be bringing people in, new people, and they will disciple people, yes. and the yeah. church will grow and grow and grow. Have your way in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Right now, I have to change right now. Close your eyes. See your family. I know some of you have loved ones, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, maybe even your own spouse. You have great-grandkids. You might have relatives, neighbors, acquaintances that you want in the kingdom. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it is your will that all be saved. We pray on behalf of them. We pray on behalf of them. We stand in the gap for them. Show us, Holy Spirit, what demonic forces are holding them back. Show us if they're caught in addiction or a cult. Show them, show them. Re Reveal yourself to them in dreams and visions. And we ask, Almighty God, that you surround them with Christians. And the Christians will witness to them and witness to them. Some of them won't listen to us, but send people to them. And we keep praying. Show us. Show us what's binding them so we can loose them yes. in Jesus' you, name. Lord. Loose them so they will yeah. hear the gospel yes, of Jesus Christ. We command the deaf and dome spirit that's on them, the Antichrist spirit that is controlling yes. them, to set them yes. free in Jesus' name. And we thank you in thank Jesus' you, name. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. God is good. God is good. And then, I just want to say this, and then there's a multitude that at one time accepted Jesus. They've heard the gospel. They prayed the sinner's prayer. But they're floating around out there, backslidden. So not only are you going to lead people to the Lord, first-timers, you need to reach out to these people that got wounded, hurt, scarred, and they'll come back. I'm telling you, it's a season of the prodigals. The Lord spoke to me that very clear. The prodigals are coming home. The prodigals yes, are coming home. Yes. The prodigals are coming home. And I ask you, in closing, I'm going to turn it back to the pastor. Julie will be at the book table. I have, a, I have to get up at 2, 2 to get ready to go to the airport. So if you're going to buy tapes and things, I want you to do it right away so that we can wrap things up and I can leave. And uh, I just want to say, Pastor, thank you so much for letting me be here. I want you all to pray about where I'm supposed to live. Here. Here, here, here. Anyway, pray. I have Heather watching. She, she had to go home too. It's having a fever. Okay. She had that jagged tooth. Okay, well, we're going to pray for her in Jesus' name. Heather, we're praying for you. Okay, Heather, can you see? Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes. All right. Yes. I'm going to sit down before I fall. I'm done. Don't forget the book table and get, let's go fishing and all the tools you need for soul winning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your equipping over these last few days, but also in this whole time, because you are hmm. I hear the Lord saying calibration. Calibration. You are recalibrating your church.
Yeah. The body has been out of alignment with its head. And he is recalibrating us to be back into that full alignment. It's like a heavenly chiropractic adjustment. Yep. Thank you for forgiving us where we were out of alignment. We confess it. But thank you that now there is an equipping and an empowering to be who we already are. Ministers of reconciliation. To all. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to speak. I just want to speak a release over this house and call this house a soul winning house. A soul winning house. A house of discipleship. A house that goes and that puts on display good news. We don't want to preach sin. We want to preach grace and salvation. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that release over this house. Thank you, Lord, that it also, we want to speak that release over all of your house in this whole area, Lord. That the church in North Idaho, Eastern Washington, Western Montana, the inland northwest here, that the church here would be a soul-winning church. Lord, able to receive the harvest, able to receive the prodigals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Yep. Thank you. We seal it by the power of your blood, and we also thank you that your name is upon us. In the name of the Savior of the world, Jesus, the Anointed One, amen. Amen. Love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for committing. Thank you for stepping into new things. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for yielding to the Lord. Thank you for love being what compels you. Yeah, yeah. Well, get your books, get your resources, whatever it is. Grab your, grab your manuals that you purchased. And uh, if you want to receive more ministry, if you want prayer for something going on, you can grab somebody next to you. Um, you can grab Joan. She'll just... Do something quick. Boom. Okay? And all right. So love you. Love you. Thank you, Thank you so for much. being here. What a blessing. Keep me in prayer.